The Eagles are wasting no time conquering the offseason, spending the last seven days committing to building through the trenches. Brandon Graham, Jason Kelsey, and notably Isaac Sayamalo have all been beneficiaries of this long-term plan implemented by the Eagles. However, it seems like only a year ago, many were questioning the growth of the former third-round pick after a season-long struggle. After a battle for the starting left guard role that extended into week two of the regular season, it will be Stefan Wisniewski who took the reins during the Eagles' Super Bowl run. Sayamalo then moved to centre an off-season later before one of the most underrated seasons by any Eagle in the 2018 campaign. This film room will look at his development and answer exactly why the Eagles have decided to invest in the young, versatile lineman. My name is Liam Jenkins and this is an episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started though guys, make sure if you enjoy this sort of content that you're hitting that subscribe button and leaving a like as well. We want to build the biggest Philly sports community possible. Again, we need your help to do it. There's merch available in the description and don't forget that you can follow me and Philly Sports Network on Twitter at Liam Jenkins 21 or at Philadelphia SN and be sure to visit phillysportsnetwork.com for your daily dose of Philly sports news. Let's start with the fundamentals, and more importantly, his lower body strength and agility. And that last word is something that many people love to use with linemen, but it's very hard to quantify. Sayamalo does a great job below of moving his feet, keeping a very firm base, his feet are shoulder width apart, but look at how much movement he's able to cover, almost mirror and matching what the pass rusher is doing before peeling off that block to protect the quarterback. In his first game back as a starting left guard, it was a topsy-turvy moment, but look at the amount of drive stemming from that front leg he's pushing back into the defensive lineman which means his base stays the same and it's only his back which curves he's a very difficult man to knock off his spot and even here on one of Carson Wentz's most beautiful throws in his short NFL career it's Isaac Sayamalo that under the radar he's just becoming a technical monster look at that he's stopping all kinds of counters and rustling and bustling underneath and keeping that pocket clean for as long as he can back against the Vikings watch those legs he's not gonna move even despite the pocket moving around him. Just watch the way he's able to kind of counteract what we're seeing here. Again, a flurry of counters, constant hand replacement, almost a swim move there, didn't move one. Another aspect of Samalo's game is patience. He's able to reposition his hands with ease no matter what the scenario. We see another example of that Minnesota game where watch what number 96 tries to do. Samalo repositions that outside arm, just reshuffles it back underneath to gain a firm grasp. But one of the best examples I could find was against Calais Campbell who is no slouch by any stretch of the imagination. This was a big time completion to Jordan Matthews, but look at the amount of work that the defensive end will give Sayamalo. He tries to break inside, then throws his weight back to the outside, and look at that hook underneath. Sayamalo not letting go, stays with that firm wide base, and he's just not letting him through. That Jags game, in my opinion, was one of the best I'd seen from Sayamalo. Even here, he gets work from Malik Jackson. And look at the abundance of things he tries here. Trying to get underneath and really dig that arm into the chest of Sayamalo. But again, the left guard has absolutely none of it, despite Jackson bringing all that power and momentum trying to drive through. What he's really able to do so, so well is shift weight from one side to the other. Like we saw with Campbell, here's an example from that Vikings game once again. The pass rusher trying to shift inside. Sayamalo, instead of taking one step out or moving one side of his body, shifts it all at once and then drives forward. And it is such an underrated aspect of his game. One of the biggest reasons behind Sayamalo's success was that he had a very strong supporting cast around him. Just like Vitae did when he stepped in at either tackle spot, names like Jason Kelsey were pivotal in helping him hit the ground running. And who can blame the Eagles for giving him that leverage? You've got Brandon Brooks alongside Kelsey, who's not allowed a sack since 2016. Why not give Kelsey that extra responsibility to nurture and develop the players like Isaac Sayamala who could one day be taken over that throne? For instance, here's a great play against the New York Giants where Kelsey just helps shield Wentz that extra little bit longer. It's such a minor touch. It's, all it could be is a simple nudge or Kelsey coming over to pick up a double team, but it gives that confidence and that insurance. And this play here actually turned into a quarterback scramble for a monumental game in a pivotal scenario. And just look how long the two of them are able to hold and sustain that block. 
lot. That's a tough thing to do. And look at the drive. They're both standing up right. There's car. There's no hesitance. It's a big win for the Eagles. One of the things Stoutland has done very well during his time with Sayamalo, though, is refine those technicalities. And what we're going to see here are two examples of something which can be related to the Crowther drill, which is something you can do at the college level and above that coaches teach, which helps offensive guards get out of their stance and get vertical on those running plays. So your first step, you go out. Your second step with your shoulder square, you're going to push vertically into the defensive lineman, meet him with your shoulder, your body square, and then burst through. So accelerate through that block. We see another example of it against the New York Giants here. We saw it several times in this game. But you burst out, then vertical, shoulder in, body square, and it helps you drive open that hole. And to see a young player execute that so well, it's just so refreshing. You don't see it often. But what about this? Where's Sayamalo on this play? He's not at guard. He's playing right tackle. This was the very same game. Now, here's one against the Jaguars. He actually gets beaten pretty badly by Calais Campbell on a swim move. But even there, there's a lot to like. He's been thrown into a live situation in a different stance, executing a different type of play, facing a very different type of player. However, he can still hold his own. That wasn't the worst rep in the world. This next play, swim moves are still a bit of an issue for Sayamalo. It appears that when opposing defenders can really come into him with a flurry of pass rushing moves, or at least hit him with some burst of momentum, that he can struggle. And if he can't get that base set, that's when things get problematic. And that's only going to come with experience. But let's watch this next rep. Again, back at right tackle against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You can see where he's nurtured that kick slide from. And although that's sloppy, he keeps the quarterback clean. The difference in getting out of that stance is that he almost falls back. You can see it here that he's almost flailing back towards the quarterback, trying to keep his arms ready to make contact and engage. He's able to do so. And again, that's something that's going to come in time. But the stride this player has taken from year one to year two have to be commended. Again against the Giants, bursts out in a very lame jump type manner, initiates contact, keeps the player at an arm's reach. That is tremendous tackle play considering the circumstances. Now in terms of run blocking, it's a mixed bag. There are plays like this where he gets brushed past quite easily, turns around, realises it's a screen and then just gets directly in the way of Corey Clement. But then you've got plays like this, which are just filthy. They pull the guard, bangs into a defensive lineman with absolute authority. And this may be another of my favorite plays from Sayamalo. In the playoffs, he's telling Peters he's on the pull. There he goes, straight into contact, drives open a hole, and the mighty mouse flies through for a big gain. Run blocking is one of those assets where because of his agility, because of that lower strength, look at this. He's going to drive Eric Hendricks back up the field and look at the way he does it. It's into the path of the running back. There's not much you can do there. But what about this play as well? This was a screen against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He gets outside. You may not see it now. We'll go back and watch it. This was Wendell Smallwood's huge touchdown one that sent Wembley into a roar. Let's watch it from the point of Isaac Sayamalo. So you're going to see him burst out of his stance here and immediately kick towards that right-hand side, pick up a block, and at that point, you can see it's Jason Kelsey, it's Isaac Sayamalo, and it's job to good, and from that point, the player falls over, Smallwood is off to the races. One of the other aspects of his game I did want to mention was increased awareness when it came to stunt and twists. He previously struggled quite a lot in picking these up, but there are two examples here where he's able to see them coming and react accordingly. It's a very hard trait to acquire. It comes again with experience. And if there's one phrase you can take from this video, it's experience and it's nurturing and it's development. And do you know what? A year ago, people were ready to give up on Sayamalo to say that he hadn't been a starter in this league, that he couldn't win out that starting role at left guard going into 2017 but you see the strides he has made since being with the Eagles as someone that can now plug in at tackle at guard and at center where he's now spent an entire offseason working and you can only be impressed with that development why wouldn't the Eagles want to invest in a player who can play at any spot along the offensive line and be reliable that isn't going to be a liability or give up those huge plays it's rare to find that combination of size speed and agility and Sayamalo has all three so it's a big time move for the Eagles it's shoring up the offensive line. And a little known fact is that Sarah Milo was the one snapping the ball to Wentz during some private workouts and pro day before the draft. So the two have chemistry. 